down in a lonely manger the humble crest was born and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn High Point family and friends and ho 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 Merry Christmas. I hope that you are having a great uh, Christmas morning if you are watching this uh, on Christmas Day, if you're watching it Christmas evening or maybe sometime during the week. I hope that you are having a great Christmas season and certainly looking forward to, we're all looking forward to a, uh, a blessed new year. I want to welcome you to uh, our High Point Christmas special, and this is just an opportunity to touch base with you, wish you a Merry Christmas, get into God's Word for a few minutes, and I am coming to you from the, of course, from the famous backyard of High Point. It is a little brisk back here this morning, um, but it is beautiful, and um, it is a pleasure to welcome you, whether you are part of our church family or maybe you're just uh, tuning in, um, we we welcome you. Um, want to uh, want to just remind you if you're watching this on Christmas Day that uh, we will be gathering uh, tomorrow morning, uh, December 26 at 10:30 a.m. We will have a nursery. We will have a special children for our program. It's going to be a very sweet informal service. We'll be singing some carols and uh, and so we invite you to join us the day after Christmas uh, on uh, December 26 at 1030 a.m. And then next Sunday, January 2nd, we will be back to our regular Sunday morning schedule of 9 and, uh, and 1030. But again, thank you for joining us this morning and um, I'm excited uh, for what God has put on my heart uh, to share with you today. I'd like to begin, we're going to be talking about giving and gifts, and so I'd like to begin with a very simple call to worship, and uh, no razzmatazz here, just your response, whoever you're with, uh, if you're by yourself, speak it out, if you're with a group of people, speak it out. Your response is, you gave us your son. Let's practice that. You gave us your son. Now you. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. You gave us your son. We needed hope. You gave us your son. We needed forgiveness. You gave us your son. We needed to learn how to pray. You gave us your son. We needed to know that you understand our hurts. You gave us your son. You gave us everything we will ever need when you gave us your son. And so we remember that in that small village called Bethlehem, you made life worth living, the load lighter, and hope a reality when you gave us your son. Amen and amen. Last year uh, was a very interesting uh, was a very interesting year, and uh, beginning on Christmas Day, I. <laughs> Uh, was right in the middle of a personal COVID experience. I had just been 
uh, diagnosed and uh, I decided that I was going to, I had already decided that each day I was going to record um, a, uh, the little 12 days of message uh, experience, the 12 days of Christmas, and I committed to that for 12 days and did that, starting on Christmas Day and running 12 days. I thought about replaying that. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that again or not, but uh, a few years ago, I researched how much the 12 days of Christmas would cost. Since we are talking about uh, I'm going to be sharing some scripture with you about gift giving, and uh, I, I thought it would just be interesting to see what my true love gave to me. What would be the total cost? Well, here it goes. There might be a little bit of inflation that figures into this, but um, a partridge in a pear tree um, costs for a partridge in a pear tree uh, $25. Uh, I don't know if that includes, excuse me, that is just the partridge. <laughs> what am I thinking? That is just for the partridge. The pear tree, $190. $190. Two turtle doves. Two turtle doves. $375. Three French hens. $180. $2. Four calling birds. $600. Five golden rings. Now, this, this has $750. I'm not sure what kind of a ring that is, but just please work along, uh, play along with me here. Six geese a laying. $360. Seven swans a swimming, starting to get pricey, thirteen thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars. Eight ma eight maids a milking. I'm there's a lot I could say, but I'm not going to say anything. Uh, the cost that I found on that was fifty-eight dollars. Hmm. Nine ladies dancing. This is per performance, seven thousand five hundred fifty-three dollars. Ten lords a leaping, five thousand five hundred nine dollars. That includes repairing of the spandex, uh, the spandex when they leap. Um, Eleven pipers piping. Two thousand seven hundred eight dollars, and drum roll, twelve drummers drumming per performance, two thousand nine hundred thirty-four dollars, for a grand total of thirty-four thousand two hundred eighty-four dollars. Hmm, my true love gave to me. I think that in order to organize that and pay for that that person would definitely qualify, uh, would fall into the category of a, of a true love. Well, that is, just, uh, that is just for fun. Of course, we are talking this morning or this evening, whenever you might happen to be watching this, we are talking about the greatest gift of all. And that is, excuse me while I pick up my Bible, that is the gift of of Jesus Christ, the gift of Christ that God gave to us. We talked about this last Sunday in church. When love came down, love came down, that God is love, love is God, and because God was there in the very beginning, love was there in the very in the very beginning. Well we know that gift giving is a fun is a fun part of Christmas. It's fun to give gifts. It is fun to receive gifts and to be uh, to be on the receiving end. Um, I want to share with you, uh, if I might, uh, some scriptures that are related to uh, giving, and um, they are in no particular order. Um, but uh, just as a reminder. Um, 
just listen to these and just let your spirit receive them, receive them today. I will make these scriptures available through our e-blast or maybe on Facebook or both. John 4.10, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Romans 8.32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? 2 Corinthians 9.15 Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Ephesians 2.8 For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Praise be to God. And we all know John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And one of my very favorite verses from James 1, 17, every good and perfect gift comes is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. May God bless the reading of his word to our hearts this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, a few things about gift giving and and the gift of God the gift of God's son as found in Jesus Christ first of all God's gift came in the most humble of wrappings we know that don't we we know that how many times have Sunday school teachers and pastors over the years referenced the fact that the God of the universe sent as a birth announcement, the birth announcement of his son to a group of shepherds in the, in the hillside and that, um, that Jesus was born in a, some say a cave, some say a manger, uh, a feeding trough. In the most, in the most humble of settings, um, in the most humble of wrappings, isn't that the way it is? Aren't we sometimes, isn't, isn't, it just, isn't it just sometimes the small things that uh, are sometimes, uh, that, that are the things that touch us, that often touch us the most? Um, my dear cousin, Don Padgett, uh, I don't know if he still does this, but he, it was very common for him to wrap gifts in newspaper. I don't know if you have anyone in your family that does that. Um, but it was whenever we had uh, a birthday party or Christmas gatherings, we would always, if there was something wrapped in newspaper, we always knew that it was Don. I think it was, uh, Don could afford wrapping paper, um, but I, I think it was kind of done tongue in cheek and he, it was just kind of his signature, it was kind of his trademark um, for, him to, for him to wrap our gifts uh, in that way. But God's gift came in the most humble of wrappings. Um, number two, the gift tells us something about the heart of the giver. I, I want to share with you, first of all, uh, talk about the humblest of wrappings. I want you to look at, uh, I want to line this up so you can see. Some of y'all know immediately what this is you know that this is a uh, that this is the wrapping of the gifts that our children have been receiving oh my goodness Clarence I don't know how many how many years now but uh, but at our Christmas at our Christmas Eve service at our family service um, all of our children received a handmade gift 
the the wrapping is made by Nancy Worley and Clarence and his band of uh, merry elves uh, made these precious gifts for our children for every and they've done this for years a, a variety of different puzzles and banks and uh, cars and little planes and and all kinds of special look at that look how adorable that is um, they do this because they love the kiddos because they love God because they love this church and 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 Clarence and and again his his group of uh, helpers have also we've now I think we've well passed giving out uh, a thousand uh, handmade crosses but this the quality of this work of the this reveals the heart of the giver the even the wrapping being handmade reveals the heart of the giver the gift of jesus reveals the heart of god which is a heart of love for god so loved the world that he gave while we were yet sinners while we were still sinners god sent his he demonstrated his love for us by sending his son to die for us jesus was born to die we said that last sunday morning and give us the gift the precious gift of salvation god's gift came in the most humble of wrappings the gift tells us something about the heart of the giver and the gift is meant to be shared the gift is meant to be shared it's meant to be given away i i i I, I remember that old, I don't know if it was a song or if it was a, if it was a statement, love isn't love until it's given away, until it's given away. And I want to challenge you here this Christmas weekend or this last week of the year or even into this new year. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more on the morning of December 26th and maybe the, the second Sunday in January when I'm preaching again. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about this a little more. But let me, let me just challenge you with this, and I'm challenging myself as well. Number one, all of us can give the gift of presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. You may not be able to afford a present. All of us can give the gift of presence. We can give the gift of self with a note, a phone call, meeting someone for a cup of coffee. In person, in person, the gift of presence. And High Point family, you are so good about this. I am going to strive to be better about this in this new year. Number two, all of us can give and receive the gift of God's grace. I hope you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That would be my heart's desire for you, but all of us can give and receive the gift of God's grace, especially during these days, during these times in which we are living. People are in difficult places right now. And I've said this so many times. Becky and I talk about it all the time. We really believe that people are doing the absolute best that they can. I, I, I just ha I have to believe that. Most people are doing the best that they can. We can all give the gift of presence. We can all give and receive the gift of God's grace because of all that God has given to us. That's why we are able to give grace to others, because of the grace that God has shown us. God's riches at Christ's expense. You've heard that many times, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. I decided to 
finish out this Christmas segment by stepping out in front of the church and um, and and just having the closing out here for something different. Um, first of all, thank you so much for joining us on this Christmas morning or this Christmas season. Um, let me remind you that there is that there that there is a greatest gift that you can give. And that is the gift that you give to family and friends that you know without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus Christ. That is a gift you give to your family and friends. I, that is very fresh on my heart, certainly on the heart of my brother as our dad, uh, as Jesus welcomed him uh, Monday of this week. And um, man, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him so much. But we have a knowledge. We know, we know without a shadow of a doubt where he is. In fact, he said, if you come home, if you come to the house and find me with a smile on my face, you'll know where I am and you'll know who I am with. And as much fun as it is to give and receive packages, these kinds of gifts, that is a gift that lasts throughout all eternity. And it is one that uh, is going to strengthen uh, my brother and I and my family and uh, during this season. And I know many of you have also experience lost this season and as I said in the e-blast you as well are in our prayers but let me offer a prayer for you it is found in Rick Warren's little Christmas book it is called the purpose of Christmas and in the back of it is a Christmas prayer and I would like for you to bow your heart and receive this prayer uh, as we close out this time together. Hear these words. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, so I could get to know you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being with me all of my life, even when I didn't know it. I realize I need a savior to set me free from sin, from myself, and from all the habits, hurts, and hang-ups that mess up my life. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I want to repent and live the way you created me to live. Be the Lord of my life and save me by your grace. Save me from my sins and save me for your purpose. I want to learn to love you, to trust you, and to become what you made me to be. Thank you for creating me and choosing me to be part of your family. Right now by faith, I accept the Christmas gift of your son. Fill me with your peace and assurance so I can be a peacemaker and help me share this message of peace with others. In your name I pray, amen. Rick finishes this prayer with this very simple paragraph. When you read that, when you heard that, did you sincerely mean it as a prayer to God? If you did, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. The Bible says there is joy in heaven anytime anyone commits his or her life to Jesus. If you just now accepted the gift of God's grace by faith, the angels are having a party in heaven for you right now. Praise God. And if you said that prayer for the very first time, we would love to hear from you. I would love to be able to pray with you. Um, if you'll go to our website or to our app, there's a place for praises and for prayer requests. Please let me know and I'll make contact with you and because uh, we want to support you and serve you any way that we can. Again, 
God bless you. Merry Christmas and have a blessed new year. Take care and God bless.